So I've moved into this building. What the heck's going on? Is van life over? Yeah, kinda. Let me explain. I actually moved into a residence in style hotel because my van was in a car crash. I was rear ended near Fort Worth, Texas about a week and a half ago. This is the damage that was caused. Fortunately, my ladder and tire carrier from Rover Vans out of Chicago, Illinois saved my van. You can see the big bend right here and then it goes back up to where it normally was. Uh, the crease, while it doesn't look bad, is just bad enough to really get me messed up. My hinges do work. This door does open. This door does open. Obviously they both close. And when the impact happened, the guy crushed me right here. We pushed the door in. And what you're looking at is $16,000 of damage that needs to be repaired. And where I'm headed to this morning is to the RV dealer that has a body shop so they can do the repairs, the body work, we're getting this replaced, and even the wrap, this portion of is getting replaced. Without the ladder and tire carrier, this would have been a much, much worse story. I'm 100% convinced the truck that hit me from behind would have entered through the doors and crashed the, uh, crushed the furniture. So I'd probably be very vanless, very homeless, and this would be a very different situation versus me driving the van uh, to the repair shop. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through what happened, take you to the actual crash site, and we're gonna go to McLean's RV in Fort Worth, Texas. Where we're gonna drop off Miss Lily for a few days while I live in the hotel. I have prepared the van for dropping it off for many days, which means I have emptied out my fridge, my freezer, they're fully defrosted. We'll close those up. So when I'm in a situation like this, or when you're in a situation like this, what I recommend is if, you're gonna, if it's gonna be more than three or four days, get everything out, fridge freezer, defrost it, get all the water, move everything out. Everything here, I'm probably gonna move, th move these items here uh, put them in the bathroom for the work that needs to be done in that back half of the van. Uh, my Volta system has been turned off, so I'm preserving the system where I left it at about 90% state of charge. Everything else been moved out, all the valuables stashed away, and with that, let's head to the crash site, tell you what happened, and then to the dealer to get Miss Lily into the hospital. The morning of the crash, the navigation was telling me to get into the right lane because I was going to be turning right up here at the light to get onto the freeway frontage road to get onto the freeway for a few minutes. So the intersection has a right turn that yields to oncoming traffic from the left the light had turned green for this road going south, and this is right where the crash happened, right about here, right at that crosswalk. And that guy just ran literally into the back, and we can still see his shards of debris here. We'll pull over, and I'll explain again what happened. Immediately upon impact, the whole rig just jolted forward. I was not at a dead stop. I don't think he stopped at all. And everything in the pizza oven, that'd be the thing above me, uh, immediately landed up on the floor and there was just a huge crunching sound and it was an OMG, I'm out of the van business. After collecting myself for a few minutes and realizing nothing had been damaged from the inside, meaning he hadn't penetrated the back doors, I stepped outside to see. So jumping out of the rig, it was pretty dark still and I got out, his truck was right here. I kind of cruised my van quick to see what was going on realizing it had been damaged, but not super badly because of the ladder and the tire taking the brunt of the force. This was soaking wet with antifreeze and fluid and bits of his uh, truck, which was right here, um, were still lodged into the, uh, the bumper and what have you. Again, I gave a quick perusal of this, realizing it wasn't super damaged. I took a look down below to see if the Volta box or the sewer system or the fresh water system had been damaged and that nothing had been. And uh, well, while certainly damaged, it wasn't catastrophic, it could be driven. His rig, however, was about right here and was in really terrible shape. Uh, we'll... 
it was severely smashed in the front and was making a terrible grinding sound. And if we walk back here, we'll see bits of his uh, Toyota Tacoma in the curb. And right where that truck is right now is where he hit me, just right behind the, uh, right there, right behind the um, yield sign. So he kind of struggled over this way. His vehicle stopped. I clearly had stopped. And what was kind of interesting is that we passed through the intersection on this access road right here. This light was green, so cars were coming this way. And that's what caused me to yield because there was a guy coming down here. I wasn't quite sure which direction he was going, like that guy right there. And uh, there was an ambulance just a little bit further down. And when the crash occurred, the ambulance pulled in front of me, which was pretty awesome. They jumped out to see if we were okay. We were. I was pretty shaken because I wasn't wearing much clothing, headed to the gym, just flimsy shorts and a tank top. But this could have been way, way more serious to me if, again, this latter entire situation hadn't been on the back of the rig. Pretty badly crumpled there. But overall, not bad. Headed to the dealer to get that remedied. From the crash site, what I did is we called the police. I think that's probably the best practice. Um, I use the Progressive Insurance app. My van is covered as a full-time traveler by Progressive Insurance. I made a claim right here on site. Um, it, it took all the uh, GPS coordinates. I put all this information in. I put in uh, the police report number and a whole bunch of stuff right here at the crash site. And that got the wheels of um, in, in motion to get this uh, thing corrected. Fortunately, he wasn't hurt. Fortunately, I wasn't hurt. Um, I'm not sure his truck was totaled, but it'd be pretty close. Checking the mirrors carefully. As we pull away from the crash scene, I think what happened is he really wasn't looking at me. He was looking at the traffic oncoming so we could get onto the access road even more quickly. I just find that drivers these days are so distracted in such a big hurry to get to the next stoplight. Um, this could have been very easily avoided if he had been paying attention to me, not the traffic that I was waiting for. Have you been in a car wreck? Let me know. All right, had a chat with the guys and they're just going over the top. This is just so great. Um, so the, the last remaining part gets here uh, today, Monday, and then the wrap material gets here on Tuesday and the ladder assembly gets here on Wednesday. So they are expecting me to be out of here uh, by Thursday of this week, which is just uh, by the time this releases, we'll know if I made it to the camp in Bisbee, Arizona or not. But um, they're pretty confident that this is going to go pretty smoothly. They're not asking me to remove a bunch of stuff from the van, which is great. I'll move a few things around just to get it out of their way. But um, so far, I'm feeling really good about this. A lift back to the hotel. Stay tuned. There's more to come on how this turns out. Happy ending or not? We'll find out. Running raw with the footage here. We have just arrived at McLean's RV, Fort Worth, Texas to pick up Lily. And there she is. Looking as good as new. We're gonna go talk to the guys quick, get a little bit of video, then we're getting ready to go. So we came out to the shop just to see some of the parts. Um, we're gonna get this replicated, no big deal. This is the original ladder. And the only thing that really was damaged here is this thing right here. This is a tire carrier, this peg. And there's a tiny bend here that's really hard to see, but pretty amazing overall on how this thing saved the van. Crash protection. Crash protection. Thank you, rubber vans. All right, here we go. Wrong side of the door. And let's go check out Miss Lily. So capturing this in real time, uh, no mics, no gimbals. This is where the damage is. 
Um, I have to leave this on to kind of hold these together for the next 24 hours. Consider that a Band-Aid. You can't even tell the wrap difference, can you? I cannot. It's actually coming through pretty good on the video, but uh, they were really smart. They actually only replaced this little bit here and they replaced this brown and the brown up there on the door. And uh, what they didn't do is peel all this back. So they were really smart on how they approached this wrap, not tampering with any of the old. Uh, really good job down here. And they even went to the extent to kind of touch up and repaint the hinge. Brand new ladder. Again, thank you, Rover Vans. If you're looking for a solid ladder and spare tire carrier, which the ProMaster Winnebago based doesn't come with. Comes with pegs here, that's how you climb up one, two, three, then up onto the roof. But again, just a really beautiful job. New door. And uh, just super happy. In on Monday morning, out on Thursday, close of business. Just a huge shout out to the uh, McLean's team. I'm really, really happy. Still at the dealer. What I find kind of funny is when I've been in a hotel room for this many days, I think I'm on what, day four or five? That, when I jump into the van, it really feels very small. Because I've been in this big old one bedroom apartment for the last few days, it takes me about 30 minutes to reacclimate to the size of the van. It just feels tight, which is what it is. All right, let's turn the voltage system on, and we should see the state of charge come right back to where we were, which is uh, about 95%, which is perfect. So let's hear the beep. And now we've got 30 amp style short power. In this case, it's back to the hotel to pack things up. We're leaving very early in the morning because we're headed to Bisbee, Arizona for the Weird Wild West Van Gathering, which starts today. I'm not going to get there probably till Friday at the earliest tomorrow, or probably more likely Saturday morning. So this, uh, while very um, unnerving, this story has a happy ending. I call them Van Life Miracles. And um, if you're looking for a miracle in your life, you just kind of kind of expect it, number one, and look for it, number two. That's what I've discovered. I can't tell you how great it is to be back in the van. OMG. So quick update on the pricing, out of pocket and otherwise. So the estimate came in right on target and Progressive covered all of the expenses, $16,000 for the repairs. That includes paying for the Rover van uh, replacement ladder. He got paid for that. Um, Progressive reimbursed me for my hotel bill, which was about $1,000 and re reimbursed me for the uh, lift rides that I had to use a number of times to get around to various uh, channel obligations. So I got about 500 bucks um, reimbursed from that. So really out of pocket um, was technically zero dollars in the end, uh, which I was very happy with. If, if you haven't checked out Progressive Insurance, you really want to get, uh, get a quote from them. And I've just been so pleased um, with them. Now with bike claims, uh, the tow bed for the serpentine belt if you have not seen that video we'll put it right here for you and now with a car crash um they just come through in spades um and it's only about 1300 bucks a year for a full-time coverage as a full-time traveler pretty amazing thanks for watching